Hey everyone, Ryan Mallory here, Share Planner. Uh, I want to focus uh, this video on on the reason why I've been pretty quiet on not trading today, and there and there's reasons for that. When when the market gets to be uh, at a certain point of being overextended, where there's not been any break in the action, where it just keeps going up day after day after day, it sucks in a lot of buyers. But it's those buyers that it sucks in at the tail end of a day, like what we saw yesterday, and. Uh, and what that does is it, is it causes a lot of people to want to get in because they're afraid that they're missing the the rise higher in the stock market. And uh, yesterday we're up like 21, 22 points. There's a lot of people that are buying out of panic and they're getting sucked in. Well, it's those same people that when you've been up for six straight days that it's going to lead to a sell-off, that those people are also going to lead to the to the sell-off because they're going to, just as they got in with in panicking because they're afraid that they're going to miss out they're also going to be getting out with uh great fear and trembling and panic as well because they're going to be afraid that they got in too late um and so they're going to sell their positions as well so six days we've been up that's actually a pretty difficult feat we're we're flirting with the possibility of being up seven straight days but what what you want to note here is that does not happen that much um, when we start getting into six straight days, I get very nervous about wanting to buy new positions to add to the portfolio. For instance, you look back uh, just here in the short-term history, and we've had some incredible bullish runs of late. But this one here, five straight days, we had a pullback. Um, but you know what, though? I mean, it wasn't much of a pullback because you know going forward, we we started you know trading you know much higher right off the bat again. Uh, here it was five days. We sold off for a day, and then we marched up four more days. Um, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, and then we consolidated for a good week, week and a half or so there before finally pushing up. And then you have back in uh, January, beginning of the year, which was an incredibly bullish March higher, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. And then you got a bit of a consolidation period, up, down, up, down, and then um, a little bit of a push higher. So today if we could just i would be thrilled i'd be very ecstatic if we could just sell off maybe uh one to two points lower on the day just just don't go green again that's really all i want because then it starts making it to where all right monday am i really going to be tempted to buy stocks when i know that this market has a hard time pushing higher six seven eight nine days in a row it is just an extremely difficult proposition for the market regardless of what index you're looking at and also too one one thing you want to consider um on, on some of these runs where we marched up like seven eight days in a row we didn't actually get outside the upper bollinger band big this difference here and this adds additional pressures to the market we're at all-time highs and we uh, are outside the Bollinger Band as of yesterday. So that adds a little bit of, of additional pressure. There's more reason for people to want to sell their stocks, you know, that, that I've held, you know, here from the bottom on June 24th. Since June 24th, we have been up literally um, like 11 out of 13 days or 10 out of 12 days. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, so 10 out of 12 days. If we finish higher today, it's going to be 11 out of 13 days. Uh, we, we're oversold. Um, or I'm sorry, not over, so we're overbought. I always get those two terms. If I don't think about the word that I'm saying, I'll, I'll interchange those without thinking um, in the incorrect manner. But uh, we are overbought in an extreme way. Um, short term, you know, long term, you know, I'm not going to get into that picture on the, for the purposes of this discussion. But for this video, uh, definitely oversold or overbought and I, I'd like for us to at least pull back a couple of points today I think if we just finish in the red a little bit you can possibly still have another one of these types of runs that just all it's looking for is just one day to t catch its breath and to push higher um, you can see it's happened multiple times after finishing six seven days up higher uh, right here's another good example back on uh, 312 and uh, here again on 128 so it doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the road. There's a good pops, like for instance here on 128. Even though we entered a period of consolidation, um, had you bought after that little small pullback, you had um, a nice pop there, followed by a couple pullbacks, and then a huge surge higher. So you have to you got to be pretty uh, nimble on how you manage your positions back then. But the the point of the whole matter is is that is that um, sometimes all it needs is one one day to pull back. And as I'm doing this video, we're pushing into the green, which is really not what I want to see. 
Um, I, I'm a little fearful that, you know, as we get into the final hour of this trading session, that we might actually run into the close. And I, I'm, I'm really hoping that's not the case. Um, I'd, I'd actually prefer a sell off into the close instead of a pullback, even though, oh, I'm sorry, a sell off instead of a, a push higher, even though I am net long about 50% right now. I, I'm willing to take some losses on the day. Um, not get out of any of my positions, but to actually take some losses in that it will set us up better for the week ahead if we do so. Um, let's look at a couple other commodities too. I figure um, we got the time. So I haven't talked about, about it much, but it's definitely been on a lot of people's radars and that's gold. You can see I mark these charts up like all the time. Um, let's go ahead and get the Bollinger Bands off though for the purposes of this discussion. And you'll see that it's flirting above that 20 day moving average. Um, I really don't think this is a stock that you want to get along on. If you were going to buy this bounce, you should have gotten in uh, back on Wednesday because you had that gap higher yesterday and everything else. It's getting very gappy. There's definitely some gaps to fill. I would probably say like if GLD gets up to 130, 50, 130, 75, you want to book your gains in that. I would not hold it beyond that because um, it still looks like a very bearish chart um, and one that if it gets back up to 130, 13075 that it's going to bring in a lot of more sellers that are wanting to short the stock and see it go lower because there are still a ton of people who continue to buy gold no matter what because they're listening to the wrong uh big wrong wrong people they're listening to glenn beck and all these commercials that you're seeing on cable news and everything else it's just it's a sad thing because a lot of people are getting suckered in because of these people are you know getting paid to promote promote gold and it's a volatile stock and a lot of people don't understand it. They they look at the debt and everything else and they say, well, gold's gonna be the only thing that's worth anything one day. Wrongo because I mean, let's look at uh, 2008 on the S&P right now. Um, this is a monthly chart, okay? Look what the S&P did, 2008. It goes from the peak of 2007 actually down to the March 9th. It sells straight off. Now let's look at gold during that same time frame. What does that do? Look at this. Boom, it sells off too. Now, if my theory would if if the gold bugs theory is correct, instead of it going from 145 down to 70, which is a 30% sell off, it would have gone dramatically higher, but it didn't. It fell with the markets. So, uh, when the financial markets were on the verge of collapse in 2008, did gold go up? Nope. It went down, okay? All right, let's go fast forward back to present time let's look at silver here daily chart um, same scenario as gold I think um, there's probably gonna be a push to see this thing get up to this uh, uh, $20 87 level maybe it finds some resistance at the 50-day moving average it's dropping as well but uh, I, I would say don't hold it past like 2075 book your gains get out um, I'm not even sure if it'll make that high I think that there's a lot of the crowd that's still in these ETFs that need to come down I, um, it, I've just I've talked to so many people over the years who have foolishly bought this SLV back when it was in 30s and back when it was in the 40s and now they didn't listen to me they told me I didn't know what I was talking about blah 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 and um, and I'm not talking about trade I'm just talking a lot about um, just general people off the street you know people that I've known over the years you just thought I was crazy for saying that a lot of people are gonna get burned in the gold and silver trades and they did so um, that's going to be it for now. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact me uh, at ryan at shareplanner.com or um, hit me up in the splash zone. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, then subscribe. All right. Take care, y'all.